Darlington and Z. Clyde Darlington, if you pronounce it that way, transistor arrangements, transistor pairs, give increased gain and otherwise behave just like NPN or PNP transistors. The point is less current goes into the base and more current goes through the emitter and collector so that you can power them directly from the supply and you can have the base be incredibly high impedance for better characteristics, preventing loading of your previous stage. So you can have a very low current output output stage, a very weak signal that doesn't provide a lot of power, and you can amplify that, or even just buffer it. You can just straight buffer and not even amplify using the power. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to use the good old emitter follower arrangement that I have become to love so well. And to keep it simple, I'm going to use a single-sided power supply. So we have positive and circuit ground, no negative voltage. If you're doing these transistors as a push-pull arrangement, there's no difference here. One is going to be on and one is going to be off. So just flip it around for the other one. So there's not really anything to demonstrate. Showing this half shows the other half. It's just upside down. So if you have a regular NPN, you've got your supply and your collector. And let's just be simple. I'm going to hook up the load right to the emitter, which goes out to circuit ground. And then I'm going to use my oscilloscope as a function generator for a simple DC signal. I'm not going to use a fancy signal. I'm just going to show you DC amplification because there's no capacitors in here. So it'll amplify a steady state signal just fine. So my oscilloscope connected to circuit ground and then feeding the base. My load, I'm going to try and simulate how much power you'd be using to operate a speaker. Let's say your speaker is approximately 8.3 ohms of impedance. So I'm using an 8.3 ohm resistor. It's 8.2, but I measured 8.3 because there's a tolerance. So the load is 8.3 ohms. My supply voltage is five volts. I tried this with a bigger load earlier and I had to go up to 10, but I was able to do this with just a five volt supply this time. So that was pretty cool. And my power goal, instead of saying I want a certain voltage or current, I want a power. I want power to be equal to 0.25 watts, a quarter of a watt, which is not a good speaker, really. And that's why in a real amplifier, you're not going to use 5 volts. You're going to use 12, 24, whatever, because you're going to want more than a quarter of a watt. But my resistor will handle a quarter of a watt, and it's still a good enough demonstration, so this way I don't have anything explode on my board. We don't want to let the magic smoke out. Simple equations. Power equals voltage times current. Voltage equals current times resistance. Joule's law, Ohm's law. We know power. We know resistance. We don't know current, and we don't care about voltage, so we want to get rid of voltage. Well, here's voltage. Let's substitute it in. Power equals current times resistance times current, which is current squared times resistance. So now we've gotten rid of voltage, but we need current, so we're going to move everything that's not current over. Power divided by resistance, and then we just take the square root. Square root gets rid of that, and we have, let's get rid of that, we have Current equals the square root of the quotient of power and resistance. So that's 0.25 watts divided by 8.3 ohms, and then you take the square root, and for me that comes out to approximately 173 milliamps. So what I'm going to try and do is get about 173 milliamps through my resistor. And that is what I'm going to do to simulate a power draw. So we're going to say 173 milliamps through the load. So 173 milliamps through here. I'm going to measure the base current and the emitter current. So how much current is going into the base and how much current is going through the load, into the load, and that's going to show me the efficiency. Now I'm going to actually do this on my multimeters and breadboard so you can see later in the video. But if you don't want to watch that process, I'll just tell you the numbers I got now. So I'm measuring the base current and I'm measuring the emitter current. I started at zero volts on the base and I slowly turned the base voltage up and up and up and up. There's no resistor here because it's emitter follower because the load is the resistance. When I got to a base current of 480 millivolts, I started to see current through the load. Now, this is not a perfect setup and I'm using just regular multimeters. So my multimeter is able to measure down to the microamp. So I just turned it up until I saw one microamp across the load. This transistor is not on yet. It's not fully biased. It's just getting a little leakage. So that's what's happening here. It's leaking. When I got to 630 millivolts, and there it's on, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts for a diode drop. Now we're in the good range. When I did 630 millivolts 
on the oscilloscope, on the base, I began to see measurable base current. My emitter current had reached 184 microamps. So when I started to see one microamp here, 184 microamps there, so that's a beta of 184, it, with extreme prejudice about how inaccurate my instruments are. But roughly you can see it's amplifying. So then I went up to my goal of 173 milliamps through the load. And my final result was 3.5 volts into the base, which was giving me a base current of 3.82 milliamps. My load current was 174.9 milliamps, so about 173. So you can see that if it was 100 beta, then this would be 1.74, and it's about double that, so it's about a beta of 50, which is still plenty within the range of a, you know, consumer grade off the shelf NPN discrete transistor. But we got three some milliamps on the base to get 170 some milliamps on the emitter through the load. There we go, fairly normal. So that's your single transistor emitter follower. Let's do a Darlington, just like so. The oscilloscope is driving, the, the signal generator is driving the base here, which is the exposed base. These are tied together to be the exposed collector, which is just connected to the positive power. The exposed emitter is through the load and to circuit ground, just like before. So this is regular Darlington, not z Darlington, because it's using two of the same type of transistor. And now the numbers. I did the same thing as before. I started at zero volts. When I got to 770 millivolts on the base, I began to see one microamp through the load. You'll notice that this is double. Before it was 480, now it's 770. Because again, we're going through two base to emitters. So each base emitter is now leaking. Neither of them are on. They're both leaking. So in order to actually get both of these transistors on, we're gonna to need to double this again. So about 1.2, 1.4 volts. But remember, I'm measuring the base current here, not the base current through here. I turned the voltage up until I was able to measure one microamp base current on my multimeter. And that did not happen at double this. In fact, I had to go all the way up to 2.6 volts, 2.6 volts before I saw a single microamp on my multimeter for this base current. And by then, the load current was already 85.8 milliamps. One microamp to 85.8 milliamps. That's not your 100 beta, is it? That's like 85,000, I think. Yeah, 85.8 thousand beta. That's a good beta. So as you could imagine, I did not have to go far to actually get my full load current. When the load current had reached 175.8 milliamps, I had four entire volts here, four volts going into this base, and yet it was only 11 microamps. 11 microamps at four volts to give me 175.8 milliamps. That is the power of Darlington. But again, four volts. I'm having to put four entire volts. I'm almost up against my supply just to get this thing up, even though I'm using very little power. I'm using voltage. So that's not great. So let's instead try our Z-Cli. Once again, I'll be using the NPN variant of the Z-Cli. So we've got an NPN transistor and a PNP transistor. The signal is driving the base of the NPN. We put our positive supply to the emitter of the PNP, the base goes into the collector, the emitters, or the emitter and the collector, so the bottoms, are connected together, and that is our exposed emitter of the NPN equivalent, where we connect our load just like before. And like I said, you're, you're connecting these the same way. You've got your signal going into an equivalent of a base, you've got an equivalent of a collector, and then equivalent of an emitter, and you're using it the same way, it's just different internally. So what happens now? The same as before. I turn turned up this voltage and I got 330 millivolts. At 330 millivolts, so we're down low again, I start seeing one microamp of load current. So they're leaking, but they're not on. So there's only one drop, so 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts should be all I need to get this thing going in its open state. But again, there's this amplification. So I have to go higher before my multimeter is able to notice the base current. My multimeter first noticed the base current at 1.8 volts. Before it was 2.6. So it's a lower turn on voltage before I started getting base current. So that's good. At that point, my load was 75.4 milliamps. So... At the point at which I started using a single microamp 
of base current, I am actually getting less load current. So you might say, oh, this is less efficient. This is well within margin of error for my crappy breadboard setup. This is basically the same. It's a lower turn on voltage, otherwise it's about the same. Don't read into this too much. This is not a laboratory. Look at this and say, oh, it's a lower turn on voltage and basically we're where we were. So now when I turn it up to my 170-ish at 177.1 milliamps of load current, I had turned the signal up to 3.2 volts. And that's even more clear because before I had to turn it up to 4 volts, now it's only 3.2 volts, so a lower turn on. And I was only using 7 microamps. And I'd love to say, look, z is even more efficient. No, that's once again within re realm of error, margin of error. This is an imprecise demonstration. The point is, it's very clearly 0.8 volts is statistically significant. You can see that's a big enough difference. You say, oh yeah, it's a lower turn on voltage. And then 7 or 11 microamps is about the same. So for about the same base current, lower turn on voltage for the load. But remember, your headroom is reduced. So right now, you have a lower turn on voltage with no downside, no downside at all. But at whatever point you have to have more voltage across the load to get more current, if your supply is not high enough, you're going to lose that one single emitter to base, this one, emitter to base drop, because emitter to base collected to emitter through the load. So if you're running close to your supply, you're going to cap out your signal. You're going to clip it. But if you're not clipping it, then there you go. Nice and efficient. So there's my numbers I got, and now I'm going to go ahead and show you. If you believe me, if I have a trustworthy beard, then you can tune out now. But otherwise, stay with me. There's nothing really to see in the breadboard, it's just a couple transistors. I'm using a 5 volt power, and I'll give it a current limit of 200 milliamps. So 5 volts of input power. And I'm using my wave generator, a DC signal. Right now, it's at zero volts. So if I hook up just the regular one transistor NPN emitter follower with the 8.3 ohm load, the signal goes into the base and the emitter goes into the load and then the multimeters. Let's set them both on microamps. They're reading zero. You should be able to see that. The left one is the base current. This is the load current. So in my case, the emitter current, since I'm using NPNs or NPN equivalents. But base current, emitter current. So right now, zero volts, we're getting nothing. So I will now turn the signal up. I will turn the signal up until I begin to see some load current. Keep going. Okay, there we go. So now I'll turn it down and we see about one microamp through the load, it's leaking, we're at about 480 millivolts. If I keep turning it up until I see base current, we get it about there. So this is about 690 millivolts. I've got 532 microamps, and you see it, it varies wildly. So this is, see the inaccuracy? See, I'm still seeing one microamp, and now we're 300. So this is, the demonstration is rough, but you get the point. So now I'm going to turn this up to milliamps, and I'm just going to shove it right up there. I'm going to shove it right up there, and we can see we're already getting, like, there's a milliamp already, so I have to turn this up as well. So base current is at one milliamp. We got 124 there. So if I go to about 170, right about there, ah, down a little bit, we get about 3.6 milliamps here, just like I showed. So this is the irregular emitter follower. This is milliamps, this is milliamps. Milliamps base, milliamps load. So now I'll turn it back down to zero, and I'm going to switch over. Oh, I guess I should demonstrate before I burn my resistor up. Is it hot? Oh yeah, it's hot. I accidentally turned it up to 10 volts. That was not good. Let me turn it back up to here. So about 170. And you can see that's about 170 as well, as you'd expect. So the power supply is also demonstrating that it's working. So let's go down to zero. Now I'm going to switch to the NPN plus NPN equals Darlington NPN arrangement. So the signal feeds the first NPN's base and the load is fed by the second NPN's emitter. So once again, I'm going to turn up the signal until I get any base current. Oh, and I need to turn it back down to microamps so I can measure better. And there we go. So let's go back down to one. So at about one microamp of base current, we're at about a 790 millivolts. So turn it up until I see base current. Oh, and I've got to turn up to milliamps on my load. So 20 milliamps on the load, still no base current. I mean, there is, but it's less than a microamp measurement error and so forth. So we go up until, ah, there we go. So about 90 right now milliamps. This is one microamp now, one microamp and 2.4 volts. Keep turning it up until I get to about 170 milliamps on the load. 173. Let's turn it down a notch. Ah, one. There we go. Close enough. So about 10 microamps, 176 milliamps on the load, 181 there. 
So now you can see the inefficiency and inaccuracy of a Chinese cheap Chinese power supply. So just keep that in mind. That number has built an error, but these are a little more high quality. I wouldn't call Southwire a good brand, but it's not a bad brand either. It's just a brand. And there we go. There's our Darlington NPN. But over here, 3.5 volts. So yeah. So now let's turn it down to zero and I will switch to the NPN plus PNP equals c -Cli Darlington NPN transistor. So the signal feeds the base of the NPN. The load is supplied by both the emitter of the NPN and the collector of the PNP. So now, same thing. I'll turn up until I see, oh, back on microvolts, uh, microamps, back on microamps. So turn up until I see one microamp of load current. That was 800, went a little fast there. So I turn it down until I see about one. So the transistor is leaking. Transistor is leaking. Both of them are leaking. And we're only at about 330 millivolts. So one drop and it's leaking. When I see some base current, oh, there we go. Got to go up to milliamps again. Here's that amplification. So seven milliamps, 16 milliamps. Keep going up. It should be around 70, there we go. So about one microamp, a little bit under, 74, 75 milliamps. 75 there, that's nice. And we're only at 1.8 volts here. So if I go up to my 170 on the right, gently, 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 173, 175, six or seven microamps here. And that's also dependent upon the transistors involved. You know, there's another source of error. Every transistor is slightly different. And once again, it's reading 182 because it's not great, but only 3.2 volts, so it's lower. And you'll see, if I leave it alone, let me turn it down. So 3.1, now it's at 173 at 3.1. And you'll see this number is going up very gently. I guess it's settled now. But before it was going up, that's due to heat. The transistors, are they warm? Ow, 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 ow. Holy crap, let's turn that down. Son of a freshly buttered biscuit, ow. I'll be right back. Some cold water on my finger later. And this demonstrates, this demonstrates very well the way z -Cli works, the way Darlington in general works. The NPN, which was being driven by the signal, was cold. The PNP, which was providing most of the 170 some milliamps, was definitely not. So in this case, you would want to heat sink your PNP or more likely have a better transistor. But you got the point. There are some circuits you just fall in love with and everybody's gonna have different ones. For me, it's the simplicity and symmetry of all this. z -Cli, Darlington, or just regular Darlington, push-pull or single-sided, unity gain amplifier controlled by an op-amp feedback. It's a lot to say, but it's not a lot to do. It's just a couple cheap components, incredibly easy to wire up, you can buy chips that just do all that already. Oh, so simple and fun and pretty. But that concludes today's demonstration that I do actually know what I'm talking about. So while I go soak my finger, I'll be seeing you.